What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Learn With Lex. We are immediately gonna jump into the mini kickoff. We've been away for a while, obviously we have been playing Scoop. You know the concept, I'm gonna be talking about hands that I'm playing and I'm gonna give you guys a thought process in normal words. So hopefully you're gonna learn some logical poker thinking without getting swamped by too many terms and uh, all kinds of technical stuff. Now, um, you see here the mini daily kickoff. We have 166 big blinds, uh, which might seem very daunting. Uh, but I'm sure we're going to find some interesting spots to talk about um, because deep stack poker can be very treacherous because if you make a mistake, it's going to be for a lot of chips. Um, now, as you know, uh, when we're super deep, uh, we like to open a little bit bigger than we normally do. And as stacks go down, we will uh, make it a little bit smaller. Right off the bat, we get the ace eight here. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to uh, make a continuation bet. Um, we don't have to bet very large. Um, this is a board that people are going to automatically fold a lot of hands on. Remember that we're playing versus the big blind and the big blind plays a lot of different hands. That's obviously a little bit scary, but uh, since my bet's very small, uh, I'm going to call. The raise is also not very big, right? And this is something you want to take into consideration. Um, the smaller your bet, the more action it's going to get. So it's also a little bit harder to, uh, to immediately step away from. Also, of course, during the video, if you want to see the runtime of the actual tournament, look in the top left, um, because uh, that's where you can see how long the tournament was actually going for. And uh, you can see uh, uh, just how patient I was during this uh, recording. Uh, I was going to call again half pot. I mean, I'm not super happy. I think generally people in low stakes, this is something important for you guys to remember. I think generally in low stakes, people uh, use uh, a bet sizing that is too small. Uh, for strong hands as well. So I could think, oh, this is a pretty cheap price, but, um, you know, homeboy here could just be playing a hand like Jack Nine of Hearts. But um, I actually will fold this hand at this point. There's a chance that they have like a sort of a Jack of Hearts, Ten of Hearts, uh, but with the board pairing, I just don't think it's uh, it's 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 some something that's uh, somebody will naturally really want to go for. Uh, be pretty epic if they were betting a hand like Ace Four or something. Um, but if that's the case, then we're going to win their money later. So we'll just get out of the way now. All right. So again, we make it two and a half times the big blinds. We have pocket queens here. Everybody's super deep. And as stack size would go down, we make it a little bit smaller. But opening for a raise is the good thing to do. Small blind calls. So immediately when stacks are this deep, the one thing that's very important is remember what happened here. Immediately I can discount aces, uh, aces and kings from... Uh, uh, their range, uh, ace king. They could definitely have jacks, but that would be great, right? So, in terms of hands that we have problems against, uh, I think that we're uh, owning uh, versus the small blind. Now, the big blind um, uh, re raises, and what's really important here is there's you don't always have to re raise with queens. I think that this is one of those instances where I don't want to. Uh, what's really important to remember here is the big blinds could have just seen the flop for one and a half big blinds. There's nobody left to act behind them. That actually gives me a little bit of concern. So um, had I opened from this position and they would have re-raised from there, now it's much different because they have two players behind. They're going to raise more hands. But when people close the action, get to see a flop, still decide to open the action again, uh, that worries me a little bit. Obviously, I'm a little bit less worried now. Uh, there's no point in raising. We have a really strong hand. This is generally not a board uh, that we want to raise on often, right? If you look at this board, who do you think this board favors? The preflop raiser. So we're just going to call. Uh, it's very important that we do that with some of our strong hands as well. Then you might think to yourself, oh, all this balancing is not needed, but it also makes sense from a sort of like an overplaying perspective, right? If I, if I play this hand super fast, then they're going to think like, okay, what the hell's going on here? Um, and it's going to look very strong as well because it's something that people don't expect. Um, this is a really small bet. Um, I d doesn't really feel nutted. It, or it's aces, you know what I mean? But um, it does feel like somebody's like betting ace king a little bit. I think there's too many cards now uh, where we can lose value, right? I'm talking about like a jack, a king, a spade, a diamond, a nine. Anything of that nature is really bad. So let's start putting a raise in and start taxing uh, our opponent a little bit. And clearly we're going to play this for stacks. And yes, you can go into your little WhatsApp chat when you lose the aces here. But that doesn't mean that you should figure out a way how you could have gotten away from queens in the first place. So keep the moaning down to a minimum. Yes, I know I moan a little bit during my streams, but I don't do it in my WhatsApp chats with my friends. And you guys shouldn't either. And I know it happens. 
And I know you guys start thinking of ways you could get away from big hands, but just, just play your hands as you should and everything will be fine. All right, so here I've opened another table. So we're playing the, the mini daily kickoff, of course. Um, but uh, generally I notice during these videos that I get a little bit less hands to talk about um, because this is deeper stacked. So you're all in preflop, for instance, less, and there's less to talk about with the bounty. So to get enough hands for you guys, I'm going to play the, the big $1 on the side here as well. Over here in the small blinds, we see uh, pocket fours. Uh, you can definitely call with pocket pairs from the small blinds, uh, even down to like 20 big blinds or something. It's something that a lot of people don't know or don't do. Uh, I see a lot of people fold these kind of hands, which is uh, definitely not something you want to do. Uh, so make sure you pay attention to that. So we're going to call. I mean, it looks kind of nice, right? The four in between the five and the three. Um, the, the club is in there. Uh, and these are real things. Um, however, it means that... Uh, uh, we would only continue against a small bet, and um, that's not it. So we're just going to fold. We obviously have the big blind behind us, which is very important. They could have any kind of five or eight or or bluff even, you know, and, uh, and get us off our hands. So absolutely fine. We uh, we see a limper. Generally, what you want to do versus limpers, if you want to raise, because limping along can actually be a pretty good play. Um, but generally, if you want to raise, um, you want to... Uh, add one big blind per limper on what you would normally raise. So normally from this position, I would make it 2.2. So now there's a limper, I make it 3.2. All right, so there's no real reason to bet big. I know it's draw heavy, but it doesn't matter, right? Um, um, they're gonna fold a lot of their ace highs. They're gonna fold a lot of their under pairs. They're gonna fold a lot of their seven eight. Um, so it's, it plays very easy this board to just bet a lot. Um, interesting, I think I'm gonna bet again. Um, I think there's enough like ace 10 off, ace jack off, jack 10 off uh, that they're going to limp call. Uh, and by that, I mean, um, you know, there's enough hands that have a single heart that can call. They could have king jack with the jack of hearts, queen jack with the jack of hearts. Um, so I'm just going to put a bet out. It doesn't have to be anything massive, just a bet out. Like obviously getting raised here would be a disaster, uh, but we do want to have some protection for our hands. And they could also have hand like king 10 of diamonds, right? And if the river's a heart, we lose action on that, which is uh, something very important uh, to consider as well. It's not just about uh, protection. It's also you can still get value because there's only three hearts now instead of a possible four. All right, so three people uh, raised. Uh, three people limped, sorry. Um, now, uh, what I want to think here if I raise, um, I want to either have a hand that plays pretty well post-flop, that has really good value, or that blocks really strong hands. Now, this hand does neither of those, so I'm just gonna check and see what happens. One thing that immediately goes through my mind in this situation is we are the only person that has 100% of our, our our hands, right? They don't, they don't, and they don't either. Even the small blind's not gonna come along with a hand like deuce eight offsuit or nine three offsuit or 10 four offsuit, right? I mean, they might, but you know, it's their, that's their funeral. It's uh, so, but it's important to remember like in really wonky situations, I need to remember I can represent every single hand out there. But now we fold. Over here, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna come along. It's a pure min race. Uh, we're in a big blind. We close the action, which is very important. Uh, nobody behind us can can push us out the pot anymore um and you know we get a really good price six and a half to one you can defend a lot um especially with these uh, cards it's actually funny you want to be more careful with a hand like jack seven if i have jack seven i'm just folding there uh, because when people raise and people call uh, there's a bigger likelihood that they play a hand like king jack queen jack whatever you know they don't play uh, a hand like queen seven uh, small bets, which is fine. We're going to continue. We have no reason to raise or do anything else. We don't have to overplay our hands. Our seven could be good. We have some potential. One of the problems with raising is that we open the betting, and if somebody jams uh, jams on us, then we might end up folding the best hand. I'm still going to check. I think that, for instance, like it would be very natural for somebody to have a ten and ten and check it or pocket jacks. Um, uh, something like that. So we just have to hope that our hand is good, that they have a bunch of ace highs or something. Um, but I think that our hand is too good to bluff with, meaning that it wins often enough, but it's also uh, too bad to value bet with. So, you know, those two uh, facts together make it a perfect check. Okay, so if this person... F oh God, now I'm actually getting triggered. All right. So what's the best hand that they can have, right? What are we talking about here? I'm in the big blinds. We just talked about this with the Jack-5. I'm in the big blinds. I can have anything. Half pot. Boom. 
I mean, they would bet a flush on the turn, most likely, or bigger on the river. Uh, they don't have a boat. I have everything, right? We talked about this. I'm in the big blinds. I can have any type of flush. I block sevens, which is really nice, right? I have a seven in my hand. I have the nine of diamonds. So I even block the flushes that might want to check, right? Okay, so, you know, this is just this situation really shows the power of being in the big blind that we just talked about. I can have everything on that board, right? Uh, let's take a look here. I mean, I can have uh, I can have sevens, the nine of diamonds. Like, think about it. If they have ace high diamonds, they're betting the turn. But they could go for a little trap check with that, like nine eight of diamonds, jack nine of diamonds. So I actually block the flushes that might play this way. Um, I'm in the big blind. I don't like the fact that they both check the turn. Um, I, I mean, I do like it. And then there's a half pop bet and a flat calls. I think it's a good situation to uh, to go for it. It's so important not to make it look like a value bet. That doesn't work, guys. Making things look like a value bet does not work. The only thing you're doing is giving somebody an amazing price to call. So don't do that. What we're trying to represent here is a flush or a full house. What do flushes and full houses want? Getting fucking paid. So make it big, make it strong, because that's exactly what we're uh, trying to represent here. Having these two these two cards is a key element to this bluff, though. So if you have five, six of hearts here, don't go absolutely YOLO. This is these these cards are key, um, you know. And I know, you know, like like we say, like people say, oh, blockers aren't real, and they make jokes about it. But cards have specific uh, functionalities, right? And these cards uh, have very specific functionalities. So this is just one of these bluffs where, you know, if you guys tell me like on my stream, like, oh, Lex, they play so crazy, you know, people don't fold anything. Well, they do, but you just got to look for the spots and don't make it 2200 here because then if 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 home slice over there in the top right has queen jack of hearts, they're just calling, you know, but if you make it 5k, I just got this stack, you know, I just had this nice double with aces versus queens and I have queen jack, I mean, for sure, for sure they have a flush, they would never do this without a flush, that's when you get the, the thoughts rolling, right, that's when you, you need that extra power behind that, you can't just make it like, painless oh i'm probably losing but i'm oh, oh i got a call no you gotta make him suffer queen i suited we'd open this from any position in case you're curious all right omega stack in the big relatively good board for us okay so when we talk about continuation betting right you guys ask me sometimes like what how big do we want to make our continuation bet which means the bet on the flop after being the razor generally you want to look uh for how connected the board is and I can tell you that when the top card is connected to the middle card and the middle card is connected to the bottom card, like this, right? Meaning that uh, there are straight draws possible. Queen Jack is a straight draw, Queen Nine is a straight draw, but also Eight Seven. So in that sense, all these cards are connected. That's when you want to start betting bigger. So normally I could go for a third pot bet on boards that are relatively more safe. Um, but when boards are a little bit more draw heavy, um, uh, that's when you want to go a little bit bigger there. So that's why I sized up a bit there. And that's important to remember. So jack five deuce, cards don't really have any connectivity. People don't really play three for offsuit that much. So that's something uh, where you could bet really small. Same on like, uh, you know, king four deuce or even king six deuce, right? People don't really have five three off, uh, 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 three four off. Um, and the king is not connected to the six. So there's this whole... This whole area in between of hands, people will automatically fold. 7, 8, 7, 9, 10, 9, jack 10. All of those go out the window. Not the case on this board. All those hands that I mentioned will call or raise on this board. So that's why we want to price those out a little bit, right? We don't want the 7, 8 in there. It's actually really nice to fold those hands out, especially looking at my hand, right? They have quite a bit of outs. Like 7, 8 might look like dust, but they have quite a bit of outs. So, uh, yeah. Over here. I'm gonna fold king queen off because I'm a noob and I don't uh, have a time bank. <laughs> All right, ace, please. All right, so just to talk to you guys, whatever is gonna happen here with Bruno, um, if they would have called, so, uh, some of you guys are uh, a little bit unsure of what to raise in position. You generally want to check your suited hands and you want to raise or bluff sometimes with your off-suited hands. The reason for this being is that you want to bluff with the hands that play worst uh, in a limp pot and you want to take the, the hands to the flop that play best. Suited hands play better. It's easier to play flops with suited hands. Um, so with suited hands, we just go to the flop. 
Uh, now it's a min race. I'm not too convinced that I want to fold just yet. It's a small bet. What's really key in these scenarios, guys, you just can't play too weak, especially when they have a small betting pattern like that with small sizes. You can't play too weak. I have queen five. There's a lot of connection to this board. I can hit a three and a deuce. I can have backdoor spades. My queen is an over card, two, two cards on board. It's, uh, it's really stuff like that you want to be looking for in blind battles. And maybe you think like, oh, that's way, that's, that's all way too complicated. It might sound like that, but it's very important. Um, at this point, I don't even think about this. You know, I don't think about, oh, he could have an ace. Yeah, they could have an ace, but they should bet bigger. And um, if somebody bets 28% or whatever the fuck that is to me, then I'm just going to call. And nah, they don't have it. And uh, this is another, another example of why betting small as a bluff to make it look like value doesn't work. Because it just makes me not think about the hand. Oh, cool. Four big blinds, I call. You know, you're not going to have enough good hands... Uh, for me to uh, to lose there um because the smaller the bet the more hands i'm gonna have to defend with because i get better pot odds right if he bets two times pot there i'm risking a lot more meaning i need to have a better hand to call with if if the if if they bet 150 percent pot on that river i'm out with that hand because then i'll just call with my aces and i'm fine you know but now betting that small i'm not gonna fold my queens all right so over to the other table here we have fives gonna go multi-way I don't think that people are going to limp uh, very strong hands when they have 90 big blinds. Generally, they feel like it's a waste. They want to get more money in the pot. So um, I don't really think that I'm going to expect a whole lot of raises from uh, that side of the table. I'm just going to bet small. I don't... The, the, there could there could definitely be an element from this player that thinks um that thinks ooh i have pocket jacks this is kind of a scary board let's take a safe turn but at the same time that probably means that they're not raising very often on this turn so i can just call just bet of course i mean uh there's no real point in betting here so i'm just gonna check and this is also kind of nice for the small turn but if you bet small hands like ace king and ace jack are gonna stick around exactly what i did but they're not flush huh uh, hands like ace king and ace jack are gonna uh, stick around um and if i bet really big then all of a sudden i'm in a really weird spot on the river but now they also feel comfortable just to check it back and we're in a really nice pot here uh 20 big blind pot with an under pair so pretty nice and no sweat either right just purely thinking about it in a reasonable way picking good bet sizing all right we have eights uh 85 big blinds but of course we want to look at our opposition uh, we see 12 big blind stack, 50, 60. So relatively deep apart from this uh, this this stack here. So normally when we're deep, we open two and a half, but that would not really work with a 12 big blind stack behind us. So we're going to go for a middle of the road option. Uh, this this board is less good for the big blind than you might think. Because uh, think about uh, the main thing we want to think about when uh, deciding if, if, if people hit a board well is how do their offsuit hands do, right? Because the offsuit hands are the most combinations. There's only four suited combinations of five, six, but there's 12 offsuit ones, right? So the same goes for uh, the deuce three, deuce four, four deuce. All those offsuited combinations are not played in this spot, right? So this is actually a pretty okay board for us, right? It's much better than five, six, seven. Over here, we're gonna raise ace queen offsuits. We get calls, we're 37 big blinds deep. Okay, so we want to check this board a lot. People that call in position when you're the preflop raiser are going to have so many hands around this area, right? They're going to have king, queen, king, jack, queen, jack, queen, 10, king, 10, ace, 10. Those are all hands that, that just are played on this board. Now, we have the ace of spades, so we could hit it back to flush draw. Uh, we have a draw to the nuts. Ace could be good. It's a cheap price, so we're going to come along. All right, so we're going to go for a check on the turn. It doesn't make sense, right, to check call a small bet and then lead out on a card that doesn't do anything for us. Now, leading out on an ace, king, or queen might actually be pretty cool, but, you know, that didn't happen. So now we're just going to get out of the way. Um, you also have to think in terms of, like, strength, right? Uh, he calls a raise preflop from under the gun, then they bet into two, two people call, and they bet again, you know? So that's pretty strong in my book. Over here, I'm going to open king-jack off. We're always opening king-jack off suit from every position. All right, I raise preflop here. Off screen, we're gonna just bet small. Uh, we talk about a lot about what boards the continuation bet. When a board is connected, when all three cards are connected, we bet bigger on the flop. So if this is king 10 six, we bet bigger because there's more hands with straight draws and, and pairs and, and equity value. Um, but on king five deuce, we can bet really small because we get insta folds from all the jack 10, 10 8, 9 7, you name it. 
all the hands that the big blind has. We also have to do it with our, uh, with our strong hands. Uh, we can't all of a sudden get greedy because then we get predictable, right? Then people start having a read on us. All right, gonna raise sevens here. All right, we get re-raised. Uh, we're definitely gonna call. Uh, pocket pair is pretty good. You wanna be a bit careful, start calling like 10, 11 big blinds uh, re-raises. Uh, I mean, when you're both like 100 big blinds deep, sure, but um, eight big blinds is definitely we can call. Team Pro. All right, so this is interesting because now, you know, now the game, it's not, it's not easy getting paid with a set in a three bet pot, right? Now the game starts uh, of like, who's pretending not to have an ace and what will we be bluffing with, right? So um, uh, clearly we're going to start with a call. It's a board that's very advantageous for the preflop re-raiser. Um, and it's something they're going to bet a lot. It's not something we have a lot to raise with because if we have a hand like ace-jack, we don't really want to raise either, right? If we have ace-king, we're shoving preflop. Um, so that wouldn't make sense either. Uh, I think I'm just going to call. It sucks, obviously, if they have ace-jack with a diamond and there's a diamond on the river, but our hand just looks way too strong if we go all in. We're almost representing something stronger than we have, right? Um, but... When we have a hand this strong in a three bet pot, if they have king, queen, of diamonds, so be it, right? Like we're never thinking about folding this, especially, important note, because we're 50 big blinds deep. Uh, had we had a f fucking 140 big blinds, yeah, you can start considering some stuff. But now we're just gonna call, add a blocker, they block ace, king, ace, queen, and the flushes, but yeah. I mean, if they have it, they have it, uh, but uh, you know. Just seeing this hand means just like, oh, okay, so those hands are there as well. It's actually a lot harder, guys, to have uh, to have a flush there because they would have to have king, queen of diamonds, queen, jack of diamonds, or let's say queen, 10 or jack, 10. Four hands. That's four hands that they can have that beat me there. Well, aces, I guess. Okay, so we have 20 big lines. It's very important not to panic when you have 20 big lines. Obviously, we also do a lot of the short stacking videos. 2.3, it's actually pretty juicy to just go all in. Either way is fine. We can flat as well. Look at this, though. Pick up more than 25% of our stack. Oh, and these spots are going to come by, right? Like, this hand right here gives us two full orbits of hands. We gain five big lines. Look at that. Every orbit, you pay 2.4 big lines. An orbit is a round of hands. Amazing, man. Short stacking is... Uh, it, man, you have so much time when you're short stacking. I have so many tournaments where you have, uh, where you're where you're you're bleeding to seven big blinds, and oh, you, my tournament's over, and then four hands later, you have forty-eight bigs. You know, it's just, and I know that there's always the moaning, the moaning little shit in the chat, in your WhatsApp group, and they'll say, "Oh no, it doesn't happen for me." Yeah, nice for you, but I always lose those two all ends. Yeah, yeah, you know. Tell, tell Ricky from down the street that he should practice some bankroll management so he can actually play the big one dollar three times instead of only once. Okay, so this was a, a limped pot, meaning that there was a call and a call and I checked. Um, we have a really good hand. They didn't show any interest in the pot by checking. They checked twice, so we're just going to bet at it. And back to the other one. Kings or min raising, of course, we always talk about the opening size dictates how deep the table is or how deep you are. Um, and 20 big lines is always going to be a min raise. Ooh, ooh la la. Easy. Easy game, easy life. Doesn't matter, even if they call it, doesn't matter. It's just not going to fold kings. Two outs. Whoa, <laughs> flops a boat, huh? Pokestars player. And there you go. Look at that. 65 bigs from nothing. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of Learn With Lex. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I think that that bluff is definitely something uh, that's food for thought for you guys. Uh, something important to consider. We talked a little bit about the big blind. We talked about limping ranges. We did a, a lot of cool stuff that actually also plays a big part in high stakes tournaments. And you can see that those same formulas work on small stakes as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat down below. If you enjoyed the episode, like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Learn With Lex. Peace out.